Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Hilton, the Chief Marketing Officer with the Canadian Gift Association. Today, we are very excited to have Judah Hernandez joining us. Hi, Judah. Hello. <laughs> Some of How's you may it? have met Judah already at our Toronto market. He's our official market videographer. So he cruises around the market, taking videos of happy retailers and all of our exhibitors um, and their fantastic products. Uh, so you may have seen his videos play on our social media or an e-blast that we've sent you before. Uh, today, he's here to talk about all the tips um, to get better video content for your company. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Judah for the rest of the day. Thank you, Nicole. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm so honored to be here, um, hopefully helping some of you guys get some really practical information. What I want most of all when you leave this presentation is that you feel like you have some information to move forward with your video and your video marketing. So why don't we get into it? I'd like to start with an agenda just so that you know what we're talking about today, where you can maybe fill some questions in or something might come up. So today I want to tell you what is black and white media? What's this company and why you might be interested in listening to what I have to say as the owner and the CEO of this company. And then I want to tell you why video marketing is so important. Um, it's a term that we hear thrown around a lot now and a lot of companies still don't quite understand what's video marketing as opposed to just regular marketing. Is there a difference? Two things that kind of people think clash against each other when it comes to video is authenticity, which people associate with, you know, your raw video of a, through a mobile device um, on Facebook Live. People tend to associate that with authenticity or quality, more professional, high visual impact videos. But for us, we ask, why not both? Then I'm going to give you three practical tips. Some of these seem so simple, um, but within those tips, there are going to be little pieces that I think, uh, whether you're at a higher level, do this yourself, you can take away and implement on whatever device you're using um, to make sure your content looks a bit better. Of course, I'm going to give you guys a reason, an example why hiring a professional video company might be up your alley and what that means for you and why that might work. Of course, I'd miss the opportunity if I didn't say what the difference is between black and white media and other companies. We're gonna open it up to questions and I'd love to answer any. So hope you have your notepads while I'm giving this presentation. Please write down your questions. Uh, like Nicole said, you can put them in the chat box as well. And then I'll say goodbye and thank you again. I wanna start with a little uh, introduction of what we do and how we do it. This is a little video by Black and White Media. Wonderful. Um, some of you, I don't know who's in, but you might have noticed some um, of the shots from the uh, Toronto Gift and Home Show. We love filming at, uh, at that event. It's, it's sad that I won't be able to do that just yet, but I'm sure we'll figure it out down the line. So what is Black and White Media? We are a video production company that creates stunning corporate films. We capture your message in an engaging way and we develop strategic digital marketing campaigns that help you reach your target audience. 
Beautiful visuals are just the beginning of what we do. Our video marketing team help you take that amazing content that we make and turn it into conversions. That is the point after all. We want you to see a return on your investment. Now we've been in the industry, this company has been running since 2013 and I've had the pleasure of winning some really prestigious awards. Um, and this year was no different. Um, we won an award for top video production company worldwide, top 100, which is a real honor. And I'm so glad that we were able to share uh, the knowledge and the experience that we've built up over the past seven years with you guys. So why is video marketing so important? I wanna start with some statistics that really anchor in what's going on in the digital world and why this is so relevant. With these sorts of numbers, it's no wonder that the internet is being flooded with great content. Video is no longer a luxury product like it used to be. Um, but that was only available to Fortune 500 companies. And it's not just used for TV ads anymore. It's become a necessary part of every company's marketing plan, whether you're large or small. Technology has made it accessible to all with incredible high quality at, re at relatively low cost. So it's become accessible to everyone. But some of these stats are are showing us that the video on its own is not gonna be enough anymore, not usually. Sometimes people get lucky with viral content, but most of the times it needs to be part of a marketing strategy. So here are a couple stats. For example, 54% of consumers want to see more video content from a brand or business they support. This is just standard. So what's happening is if people go to your 54% of people that go to a website that don't have any video content, they tend to bounce and go elsewhere. Another poll shows that video marketers get 66% more qualified leads per year with video content. So on your website, or if you're using it to actually do social media advertising, you have a 66% more chance of capturing a lead to bring them to your product to your page and have a new customer the, the last one here is eight out of ten people have purchased a piece of software or an app after watching a brand's video now this is a very specific industry which is app and software but this number is very much transferable to lots of different industries people want to see the video because they they haven't uh, a connection to the video when it's done well. So here's an opportunity and Nicole, this is where I'll let people uh, interact and put an answer in the chat. So the question is, of all the content that is posted and consumed online, how much percent, what percent do you think video is shared more than other forms of media? I want to, I, this is genuinely, I'd love to know what people think video is being um, consumed at, what rate video is being consumed at. I'll give it a few seconds here. If we don't see yeah. anything in the chat, okay. Take your best guess. You can use the um, question chat panel on uh, just the sidebar of your go-to webinar. And give Judah your best guess. This is a fun one. I've had people 50%. Okay, that's a good guess. Okay, 50%. we've got this 54% coming in here, 75%. Okay. Yeah. 60, 60, 68, 85. Okay. Okay. So this study was done by HubSpot, the same statistics that you saw on the page earlier. So it's, we're not making this up. But video is shared 1,200% uh, more than other forms of media. Um, and that's, that's all the other forms of media combined. So this just gives you an indication of where people are in terms of content. Um, and there was this trend, and I think it's, it's 
the the mindset's changing. There was this trend that video is just a trend, and you know the typical ways we market that will be around for much longer. But we are seeing that is not the case. So, last point: Why is video marketing so important? And and here's where marketing comes in. People are getting their information online now more than ever. Video is a great tool to speak to, to speak to people in a personal way, but to a very large audience. In order to reach your target audience, though, uh, sorry, in order to reach your target audience through the noise, it's important to think of video as part of a larger strategy and not just a magic silver bullet. So, we want video to have the impact, but how do we get it to reach our target audience? That is where video marketing comes in. So first, it's creating a beautiful, impactful, um, emotional video, and depends on your demographic, depends on who you're trying to reach, those things will change. But this shows you, by the end of 2020, 82% of all internet traffic is gonna be from video alone. I have a ton of other statistics to support the the use of video and why it's so important, but hopefully that gives you an idea of where we're heading as a, as a culture in terms of video marketing. Now, when you're creating a video, here are some key things to consider. I put it into three categories. Oh, and it kind of got erased there. Apologies, I'll, I'll fix that before we, um, before we send it out. But this one is for your audience. Uh, in the middle is, uh, sorry, this is for your team on the right, for your audience in the middle, and I forgot what the title was of this one. I'll, I'll fix that. But the study showed that bad video can have a worse result than none at all. And again, it really does depend on your industry, it depends on the demographic. There's a lot of factors that play into that, but I see a lot of people trying to uh, put video out for the sake of having video, but it kind of backfires when it's not thought through properly, when it's not, when there's no process or strategy behind it. The other thought here to consider is the point of a video is to create an emotional connection. You have a, a way here to reach people on multi levels, multiple levels of sensories, sensory perception. You have audio, you have visuals, and then of course that allows you to create emotional connection. So we want to use video, use emotion to create human connection. Whether it's through comedy or a heartfelt story, let your audience feel something. Okay, uh, in the middle we have for your consideration uh, your audience. I believe that's for your audience. Uh, what's the purpose of the video? Now, there are many companies that I've worked with that are fairly new to the video production game. And what they try to do is to cram as many things into a video as possible. And what ends up happening is that the message gets lost. So what we're suggesting is to have a clear message in your video and understand what the purpose of it is. Is it for awareness? Is it to sell a particular product? Is it to create membership? Knowing what the purpose of the video is for and, and having a direct, uh, a direct way to uh, speak to the target audience through that video is very crucial. And then, like I said before, video needs to be a part of a larger strategy. So if you're coming out with a new product, as an example, and you have marketing on your website, you have different forms of advertising, the video has to be part of that strategy telling that same story. That's how it, that's where successful campaigns do best. Now for your team's consideration, thinking about who's going to be on camera, thinking about how it's going to be delivered, uh, those are some considerations, but for here, just like any conversation 90 percent of what is said isn't spoken so the person on camera um well, the big part one of the big things that i do as a director is coach people on camera to use their body language to use their facial expressions to 
tell the story with not just their words, but their body language and the visuals have to be a part of that. It doesn't make sense if you're trying to tell a heartfelt story, but the visuals look comedic or look very, um, very bland um, simultaneously or at the same time, if you're trying to sell luxury products and your video comes across as bad quality or poor quality, we'll talk about that some more. 90% of what is said isn't said by words. Now, viewers' attention has dropped dramatically. So when you're creating a video, what you're aiming to do is capture their attention in the first five seconds. Now, with the internet and with all the different distractions we have going on, people are quick to move on to the next thing. But if you really want to uh, engage with people, think about that first five seconds. You put yourself in your viewer's shoes and what would it be like to, for you to watch what you're putting out? Let's talk about authenticity versus quality. I've seen these two things sort of pitted against each other. Well, you can't have high quality video to show authenticity. It looks too slick, it doesn't look real. I've heard this conversation, but I don't believe it's true. The people who put time and thought into what their video is saying are the ones that are most successful. And those are the companies that are telling real stories. I don't know if any of you guys saw a Super Bowl commercial that impacted me a lot three years ago. It was by a company, Lumber 84, in the United States. That was shot like a film. Quality was not even in question, but the authenticity of that story the meaning behind it, without any real words being said, people knew what was going on. Those are the kinds of things we wanna emulate. So what is authenticity? With fake products, slick marketing campaigns, and smarter shoppers, people are looking for authenticity. They want real connection with a real person or company in, in their video. So here are a few ways that authenticity may affect the business or it affects your business. Authenticity builds trust. It creates a human connection, all right? Because people want to know that there's a, a face behind that robot in the computer, right? There's personal messaging on a wide scale. So when you're authentic, you're able to uh, talk to people like I'm doing right now, but in a large scale. Um, you can be personal with your demographic because you know based on who's shopping, based on where they're located, based on who typically comes into your store, you can build a persona and talk to that person. And then more important is that you showcase your brand personality. Every company has a personality, whether you believe it or not, or whether you think you do or not, your personality is how people interpret your company. So do you wanna have control of the way people interpret your company or is that just left to, to people to hope and find out along the way? Quality can be said is, uh, psychology has proven that even on a subconscious level, people associate the quality of what they see with the value of what you are selling. This is why, this is why uh, it's been shown as an example that bad video actually has a worse effect than no video. And here are a few ways that quality affect your business. When you show quality, it shows care for your craftsmanship. It shows that you care enough about your audience that you're putting some, some uh, value into the video. It shows, it associates your brand with quality. Like I said before, people associate what you, what they see with what you're selling. And regardless of if they know it or not, that's happening on a subconscious level. It develops an expectation 
in the viewer and the potential potential customer. So if you are trying to sell luxury products, like I said before, um, the video or however you interact with them in the first in the first instance, sets up an expectation for them of what to what they're going to get from their interaction with you down the line. Okay. So at Black and White Media, we think we think that with a bit of creativity and a little understanding of video, it's possible to have both. And I gave you the example of that Lumber 84 company in the US on their Super Bowl commercial. Quality makes the difference and authenticity makes the connection. No matter what message you are communicating, aesthetics and quality influence your viewers. If you're going to meet, if you're going to a meeting, you wouldn't show up in your pajamas, even one on online. Uh, so let's come to the table in the best light. Okay, now I'm giving you guys practical tips. I know not everyone is going to be able to create this super cool, slick marketing video campaign. But what you do have, let's make the best of it. So nowadays we're seeing a lot of webcams. I would just want to show you the difference with the same shot between a webcam, a mobile, and a professional camera, and how that plays a difference in people's perception. With a webcam, you have little to no control of the lighting. So your face is all typically tends to be in the shadows. Uh, and even when you're not in the shadows, when you're properly lit, if you move the camera at all, it doesn't allow you to keep the same settings. It just auto corrects everything. Mobile devices are becoming a lot better and a lot more sophisticated and advanced. You can see here there are better lights on my face, um, less shadows, but even still, there it's it's missing some depth. People wonder what makes an image look cinematic and a lot of that has to do with depth perception because the human eye naturally creates depth and so seeing that on on screen allows us to feel a little bit more like we're in that it's more immersive and this is where a professional shot comes in you create depth in the background it's a little bit more blurred and everything is a little bit more um, nicely colored, more better tones, etc. Let's get into some tips, some practical tips. So whether you are using your webcam, your mobile phone, a professional camera, whatever you have at your disposal, there are ways to better uh, put together your image to make it more professional looking. So let's consider lighting. Let's consider your lighting scenario. Try to use soft light where possible. Again, there are plenty of instances where it doesn't fit with the story to use soft light, but it does help flatten the face, especially when you're communicating with people and you want them to see the color of your eyes. You want them to see, um, as if they're standing right in front of you, all the facial features. It's important to have a uh, nice soft light. And the way you can do that is by putting a lamp in front of you, sorry, putting the light source in front of you. So right now I'm sitting in front of a window, a bay window, and you can see a nice flat light on my face that makes it even and makes it easy for you to see into my eyes. Oftentimes though, um, on makeshift or homemade videos, we don't think about these things and we often end up with harsh light, shadows cutting across the face, and uh, it's distracting. It dis it's distracting when you're trying to give a really important message, just as an example. The number one issue that we see when people are video conferencing, for example, is a lack of understanding of basic lighting. Many times you see something like the example below to the left where there's harsh light on the subject and their face lines 
uh, are deep and shadowy. So now that we're working from home, a lot of us, video conferencing is a very uh, important reality. We have to be on Zoom calls, we have to be on, on all sorts of different meetings, but we don't have to come at it like we're coming to work in pajamas. We can put some time and effort into it. And one of those ways is just by thinking about where the light sources are coming from. It's also great to think about multiple light sources. The harsh light comes in, especially when you have one big hard light coming right on your face like a spotlight and it makes very harsh shadows. So think about where you're sitting and if you can have multiple sources of light balancing on your face. Tip number two, seems really simple, but again, we can put some more effort into how we do this. Place your device on a tripod. If you're giving a, an important talk, if you are in a video conference, if you are doing a live video that's meaningful, try putting your device on a tripod. Whether you're using a professional setup or simply recording from a mobile device, a great way to create better video is by recording your message with steady shots. If you're looking to create videos from home rather than holding the mobile phone in your hand and capturing shaky footage, use a tripod along with a bit of a stage setup. Um, and this can give you a much more professional look and feel in your final output. And people appreciate that. If you are just on a white back wall and there's nothing going on and it looks the image looks really flat um, it takes away from it distracts and it, i think it takes away from what you're trying to put out there for your brand and for your messaging tip number three and this one believe it or not i think is the most important because i'll just read this for now get a device or uh, sorry, get a decent lav or computer mic for clear audio. If great visuals is out of the question, at the very minimum, aim to get clean sound. As a film professor once said to me, you can work with shaky audio, but there's no forgiveness. You can work with shaky video, sorry, but there's no forgiveness for bad audio. So what does that mean? Um, video is forgiving right we can forgive that you're on a mobile phone that you don't have a tripod people can forgive that but if you have an important message and the audio is crackling or breaking up or just overloaded blasting into the person's ear no one is going to get the message right it's important that audio be clean and clear so that the message can come through clearly so invest in a decent microphone uh, if you're doing this from your computer or your laptop, um, you can get pretty cheap, simple mics that plug right into your computer and you'll get crystal clear audio. If you're using your mobile phone, there are lots of different labs that can plug into your device. And then of course, on professional cameras, if you are looking to step your game up, uh, a decent lav mic might run you a little bit, but it is definitely worth it. Let's think a little, let's give audio a little bit more credit. So I want to tell you guys what makes my company different. Like I said before, we were awarded the top 100 in the world uh, corporate video production company, but it was not as much about visuals, even though it's a huge part of it, as it is about the service that we provide and the online presence that we have created so with service what that means is that with every single client no matter if it's a small or large company we are aiming to get to know your company so we understand the personality that person that personality has to come out in the brand video otherwise we're missing the point I know a ton of companies video production companies that create exquisite visuals but they fall short in that they don't really get to know the company that they're making the video for they don't understand 
their demographic. They don't understand who they're talking to, who the audience is. And so they make a slick looking video, but it falls on deaf ears because it's not the right message for the right people. And so whether you choose to work with black and white media or whoever it is, I want you guys to think about um, if that company is putting in the time and the effort to get to know what your needs are, what your goals are. We have over 30 combined years in the film industry. Our team brings this experience of creating stunning visuals, emotional storytelling, on-screen direction, script writing, high quality production into creating impactful corporate videos on every single product project. Even more so, we use detailed and verified digital marketing strategies to get your content in front of your target audience. So there is a, there's a process to this. Um, we think it's important to learn about who we're making the video first, for first, and then the camera rolls, not the other way around. So, Nicole, I'm going to open things up to Q&A since we are broadcasting in Canada. Um, I put a list of frequently asked questions here because this is the type of questions that we get. Uh, if anyone has these types of questions, I'd be happy to answer, but uh, I'll open things up. Nicole, when you're ready. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing these tips with everyone. And uh, just to put a few things in perspective too, like I'm sure you've seen the videos that Judah has made for the Canadian Gift Association. If not, please hop onto our website, um, uh, the Toronto Gift and Home Market .ca, and you'll be able to view them there. Uh, you know, you do a lot of really great uh, corporate videos or promos or product features. And I know with all this live streaming, it could be important for our retailers to know that they could uh, stream an event from their store where they're showing everyone their products or, yeah. um, you know, do something that they would typically do in person, but put it out um, on social media through some of your services. Um, so I just thought it was really important to mention that too. Yeah. We have a few questions that have come in, but did you have any okay. comments on that before we jump in? Sure, yes. Um, obviously the landscape has changed. Uh, a huge part of what we're doing now is simply consulting because companies aren't ready to have, you know, video production companies come in and do what we used to do. So we've been helping companies do live events, uh, make it look a bit more professional, make it look uh, more aesthetically pleasing. And that can be done over the phone. That can be done through a Zoom call. There are lots of ways that you can still get a better looking image for your live event, for your digital event. But that being said, we have protocols in place um, to do uh, safe video uh, productions with all the regulations in place. So, you know, making sure we're six feet apart, making sure things are sanitized and clean. And there, there are protocols that we've put in place that have allowed myself and my team to go out and continue to do work when needed. I think that's really good to know. I'm sure a lot of people are, are wondering about that health and safety aspect as we're moving forward with opening things up. Um, so Correct. Quickly going back to something you mentioned, um, you know, we do have people of all uh, interest levels in video yes. in, in this. So uh, we have a question coming in asking you to explain what is a LAV? A LAV, great question. LAV is short for lavalier mic, similar to what I have on here. I'm not sure if you guys can see me, but um, it's also known as a lapel mic. It's one that clips onto your clothing but uh, a lav mic is a great option because what it does is it's close to your body and it allows you to give that clean, um, bassy kind of more realistic tone to your voice. Whereas if you're talking through computer audio, it's very tinny, it's very compressed, and it sounds like you're yelling at someone through a, through a bean can. 
So uh, lav mics are great options. Um, just to follow that up, uh, someone was also asking about cost effective basic equipment that people could use in their own situations. Any recommendations for that just to, to start out? Absolutely. If depends on budget. I mean, video is known to be one of the most expensive um, industries if you're going up there and doing like high end video production. But um, for you to get a DSLR camera with a decent lens and a decent mic um, doesn't have to run you, you know, thousands of dollars. Uh, we have been actually procuring some of this stuff for our clients who needed to be in meetings from home. CEOs of Fortune 500 companies uh, contacting us to ask what products they need. So depending on the budget, we can start under $1,000. You can start under $1,000 for a camera, lens, light, and microphone. Um, or you can go, you know, well, well up there as well. It, it really depends on what you're looking to spend. But the first step is finding um, a half decent uh, DSLR camera. That would, that would be a good step. Um, I have to apologize. Someone wrote in a fantastic question. Uh, the name was Matt. I accidentally deleted it with some fast fingers. <laughs> so if you wanted to type it in again, I know it was something about uh, choosing the proper target audience um, yes. for your videos. Maybe you could touch on how to choose a target audience and, and what people should be looking for for that criteria. And if Matt does type that in again, I'll relay that information to you, Judith. Sure. Well, the target audience does need to come from the company that we're working with. Like we can help you figure out who that is, but if you're selling uh, candles, you, you, you kind of have to know who your, who your target audience is. It's not going to be 18 to 25 year old uh, men living in X place or whatever. So um, just, having a, a clear picture of who you're selling to is important not that you won't sell outside of that perimeter but if if that's your target you're going to need to talk to them specifically uh so it, i i think one good way to do that is most everyone now will have a website and should have access to google analytics just as an example google, google analytics is a great way to understand who's going to your website from where and where they're spending time on your website if you don't have google analytics for your website and don't have access to understand what those things mean i strongly suggest taking some time to get to know your audience um, that really paints a clear picture of where they're coming from who they are um, how much time they're spending on your website and you can create ads specifically to them. Um, a couple of people asking about the investment to get a great promo video made and also what are the steps involved to get going? Sure. So this is the biggest question I get. That's why I put it up on the top. I, I literally get maybe a few calls every week. How much does it cost for a two minute video? Um, that I put in this way, going back to the Super Bowl, uh, Doritos made a 15 second Super Bowl commercial. Um, how much do we think that costs? I'm gonna tell you that commercial costs 10 to $15 million, everything included. I'm not suggesting that you know, you're gonna have to spend 10 to $15 million, but the length of a video rarely has anything to do with the overall costs. The costs include um, the type of equipment that's used, the amount of crew members that need to be there, uh, the length of time that needs to be recorded, locations, whether it's gonna be in a studio. There are, I'm not joking, hundreds of factors that play into the cost but i know that a, a decently a decent quality video 
uh, should start in around like the thousand dollar mark. If you're going lower than that, I personally think that's a risk that you're you're working with somebody who doesn't have the experience yet and is trying to get their feet wet. Go for it if you want to give them a chance, please. Um, but you also want to know you work with somebody you know is going to give you the quality at the end. And how you know a good indication of that is by the questions they ask you in order to onboard you into this uh, into this process. For example, before we do anything, I send out a questionnaire to all my potential clients with about 12 questions asking, what's the goal? What's the target? What's the timeline like? Questions that really allow us to create a much more precise estimate. Um, and then we have a follow-up call to talk about these things where, what's the priority? Because sometimes, you know, the priority is doing things quickly, which changes the budget. Sometimes the priority is uh, filming something in a different location. You know, there, there are different things that kind of change the factors. So um, if anyone is doing flat rates is something that I, I genuinely dislike in video because flat rates indicate to me that you are not spending the time to tailor to the person's needs. In my 10 plus years in the film industry, I've never done a single video that's been exactly the same as another. There's not a, a single video that I can say, well, let's just transfer everything we did over to here. So if you if someone's coming at you with it's X amount of dollars for this without consulting you and, and customizing, I say that's a bit of a red flag. Um, I, hope, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, I think I think that got it for sure. Um, somebody okay. is asking if they were to do an, a virtual event, um, yes. is the video available to all attendees virtually afterwards as well, or is it just strictly that live stream event and there's no recording and you have to be there or you miss out? So, two things. It depends on the software you're using. Some software doesn't allow for recording that live event. However, you can record directly onto the device that is doing it. So for example, um, I'm using a camera right now and it's a regular cinema camera. Of course, I can record the live event and then when I record it as well, I then can chop it and cut it and edit it for uh, later purposes, which is a great, another great investment into your own device so that when you're doing these things and you record it if you have a really great sound bite that you want to get out there you can cut those things down and have it as its own little promo piece or its own little piece to go onto social media so to recap it depends on the software and two it depends on what type of camera you are going to be doing that live stream event with and if you were helping someone with a live stream event, um, you would obviously be able to make those things happen? Yes, that's um, part of what I and my team do, either as consulting. So a lot of people have their own equipment already. Uh, a lot of companies do, but they just, they they haven't stretched the limitations of what those things can do. In fact, most companies that have this equipment they have barely scratched the surface of what it can do. So with a bit of consultation, we can help you turn your space, your equipment that you already have into a much more um, professional, much more impactful space. The other way to do that is by allowing us to come in and just do the entire event, depending on the scale, depending on you know how many people. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to just have a team take care of it so that you can concentrate on giving the the right message and, and helping people rather than worrying about the technical. And then finally, um, we have an incredible studio space that we've been using throughout this COVID-19 epidemic because our studio space is split into two rooms where 
we don't even have to be in the same room with you technically to record you doing a live event. Uh, you just show up with your product or whatever it is you need to do. Everything's been sanitized, cleaned, um, and you just deliver your message. You go home, and when we're done, we edit, we put everything together for you, and it's it's that simple. Can be. So there are a few different ways that we can help facilitate live events, but um, happy to help in in any way. Fantastic. Uh, we do have another question here. Uh, this person is saying that they're a small company that's not quite ready to hire a professional yet, um, mm -hmm. but they'd like to know more about using video on their phone. Any tips, any apps you can suggest that would make um, things look a little more professional for them, even though they'd be using their own phone? Sure. Um, the suggestion, the tip number two was to use a tripod. So I would suggest getting a tripod that can hold your mobile phone. That's one. Number two, with mobile phones, it's more about staging your space because you're not, no matter what you do, you're not going to get that super professional look. It's, it's a very flat image. What you can do to compensate for that is um, decorate a bit more your set. Uh, if you watch any daytime show or any cooking show for that matter, there's a big concentration on how the space looks and feels. So my suggestion is if you're trying to do it yourself, do it in a space that looks really good. Use lights in the background. Um, use things that, um, that draw people's attention in different places. And then finally, of course, don't use the phone audio directly. Uh, there are lots of different microphones that you can get for your phone. It, it also depends on what type of phone you have. iPhones are going to be different than Android phones. Um, but there are Bluetooth microphones that you can get that sound great. And there's no wires. You just literally connect it um, through Bluetooth like you would with headphones. There are wired ones as well again depends on your phone in terms of software if, if you want to do very very basic editing um there are so many programs i can't even there is um on iphone there is what's it called imovie imovie makes it really simple to cut things together and you can have a pretty slick video um just shot on your iPhone, edit it on your iPhone, and go straight to the internet. Okay, fantastic. And we do have just two more questions. Uh, of course. Both directed right at you, Judah. So your company, Black and White Media. Yes. Will you shoot Canada-wide, um, or are you specific to the GTA? Why don't you tell us about um, your location and your willingness to travel? Yeah, so... Um, my company is based in the GTA. We have our studio in Toronto, but um, over the past seven years, we've shot commercials in Iceland, Italy, Bermuda, uh, the US, lots in the US. So uh, travel is not a barrier whatsoever. Um, I think it's important when you're hiring a video production company to have a bit of trust you trust that what your vision is for this is being um, is being replicated in the final video. And how that can be done most effectively is through a process called storyboarding. Um, we've worked with some pretty cool companies. We've shot with Shopify, we've done commercials with Buick and different car companies. And one thing that I noticed that the bigger companies uh, tend to do and, and this is for the small companies as well because um, I want you guys to start thinking bigger that's how you grow uh, when you're creating video there needs to be a vision at the beginning so that you know if you hit the target at the end um, that can be done through storyboarding where you have an actual picture or an image of what the video is going to look like so that when you get to the end it's not a huge surprise and you say that's not what I had in mind 
that's the worst if you've invested money and time into the process. Um, but again, to answer your question, travel and uh, especially in Canada, not, not an issue. Okay, this looks like we're coming to the end of our questions. Just uh, one more has come in here and it's from Matt. He is saying, you may have covered this, but if you could just clarify, are there different packages available with you that can be used with different price points, like a starters package or something that's more professional? If you could just recap that one more time, that would be great. Sure, I didn't touch on that, but I did mention, I, I mentioned be wary of companies that offer flat rates, um, and that's all they offer, because every video, every company is different. Everyone's needs are different. It's hard to do a flat rate. However, we do offer what I like to call guidelines of where you can start with a package. So on our website, on our services, we have a starter pack, we have a cinema pack, and we have an academy pack um, that kind of lists out what you can get essentially within that. However, some of the things in there you may not need, some things from the other packages you may want in there, but uh, that's why we call it a guideline rather than a set package. After you say, this looks closest to what I need, then we can tailor things a bit to make sure it's exactly what you're hoping for and exactly what you need. With such big investment, you want to be clear that it is going to give you the return on investment. And Judah, lastly, can you tell us yes. how people can get in touch with you? Your email address or your website, your social media handle. I know people may have follow-up questions for you. There you go, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I didn't put my social media handles in there, unfortunately. I, I should have done that, but please reach out. Um, the email comes directly into me and I, I usually answer them myself. We have other people that do, but I personally love getting in touch with people initially because I'm a people person and I really love learning about you the brand, the company, the people here in this webinar are the ones that make up the company. So inevitably, your personality is gonna be part of this. And learning about you makes the video so much sweeter. So I love hearing from you guys. I love hearing from people and reaching out, learning about them. Please email me, check out the website. If you're interested in uh, connecting on social media, the Instagram had handle is at black and white media, all one word at black and white media and on the website all the all the social media uh connections are there as well so please feel free to reach out this is an open invitation if you have general questions just let me know you are in the can gift webinar and i would love to answer your questions if you have further ones that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Judah. I mean, we have worked with you now for several shows at the Toronto Gift and Home Market and uh, among a couple other projects. And and we just we love working with you. So I hope that people will contact you and explore what they could use your services for or reach out with questions to further the discussion on how important video is. Um, you're such a wonderful filmmaker. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule today. My pleasure. And just just one last thing, um, whether we're working together or not, um, I, I love seeing people succeed. If you have just a general question about video itself, I'm happy to answer those as well. That's great. So everyone, reach out to Judah. He's there. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Stay safe, everyone. Stay connected. Take care.